In the radiant presence of the Aten, the divine sun disk, I find solace and purpose. Its warm rays touch not only my skin but also the depths of my soul. With each sunrise, I am reminded of the Aten's boundless power and benevolence. I stand beside my husband, Pharaoh Akhenaten, in our sacred mission to honor the Aten as the one true deity. In the Aten's light, we have found a new path, a singular source of life and light that guides our every step. It is our duty to lead our people to embrace this revelation, to cast aside the old ways, and to bask in the brilliance of the Aten's eternal love. The Aten blesses our land, nurturing our crops and providing for our needs. It watches over our family, our kingdom, and our subjects. In its infinite wisdom, it has chosen us to carry out its divine will and usher in a new year of unity and enlightenment. As Nefertiti, I stand as a devoted servant of the Aten, and I pray that its radiance continues to shine upon us, illuminating our hearts and minds with its eternal truth. In the days of old, our land was rich with a tapestry of gods and goddesses, each revered and honored for their unique domains and blessings. The people of Egypt offered devotion to a multitude of deities, seeking favor and protection from various sources. But the Aten, the radiant sun disk, shines as a singular force unlike any other. In contrast to the pantheon of gods we once worshipped, the Aten is not bound by limitations or divisions. It knows no favoritism, for its light and warmth are bestowed upon all, without exception. Unlike the gods of old, who had their realms in their conflicts, the Aten rises above earthly disputes. It is the very essence of unity and harmony, a symbol of the undying source of life itself. Our ancestors bowed before statues and idols, each representing a fragment of the divine. But we, in our devotion to the Aten, have cast aside these earthly representations. The Aten is not confined to temples or idols, it surrounds us always, in the heavens above and the world around us. It is the true source of creation, the origin of all life, and the sustainer of our existence. Our worship of the Aten is a departure from the old ways, a revolution of thought and belief. It is a call to unity, a celebration of the oneness of all creation under the benevolent gaze of the sun. In embracing the Aten, we have embraced a singular, all-encompassing divinity that unites us all in its warm embrace. In the days of our ancestors, grand ceremonies were held to honor the multitude of gods and goddesses. These rituals were colorful and intricate, with each deity receiving their own distinctive offerings and rites. However, in our time, we witness a different kind of ceremony, one marked by its simplicity and devotion to the singular sun god. As the golden orb of the eight graces the horizon, Bathing our land in its warm light, our people gather in the great solar temple. The temple, designed to capture the sun's rays, allows the Aten's radiant beams to illuminate a sacred altar at its center. There, we stand in awe, with open hearts and raised hands, as we chant praises to the Aten. Unlike the rituals of old, which required elaborate processions, costly offerings, and complex prayers to various gods, our Atenist ceremony centers on the act of basking in the sun's divine presence. We believe that by simply existing in the Aten's light, we are granted favor and grace. No idols or intermediaries are needed. The Aten is accessible to all, rich and poor, young and old. We sing hymns of gratitude, acknowledging the Aten's life-giving power. The Pharaoh, Akhenaten, and I, Nefertiti, as the high priest and priestess of the Aten, lead the congregation in these heartfelt expressions of devotion. Together, we feel a profound connection to the source of all life and seek to radiate that divine love to all around us. The simplicity of our Atenist ceremonies reflects the purity of our belief. We aim to strip away the complexities of the old religion and embrace the Aten as the singular, universal deity who watches over us all. In this way, our time marks a departure from the grand spectacles of the past, inviting our people to find spiritual fulfillment in the simplicity of basking in the Aten's eternal, benevolent light, just as we do today. In the flourishing society of ancient Egypt, we find a tapestry of popular living styles that mirror the diversity of roles and classes within our civilization. Firstly, among our noble and aristocratic class, opulent residences stand as monuments to their status. These grand abodes are adorned with intricate carvings, exquisite paintings, and spacious courtyards. They serve as symbols of prestige, complete with dedicated spaces for religious rituals and entertainment. Then, 
there are the artisans and craftsmen, whose well-designed homes often neighbor their workshops. These dwellings bear decorative motifs that proudly display their craft. Artisans find in their homes a reflection of their skills and the products of their labor. For the majority of our population, the heart of our society lies in the agricultural communities along the fertile banks of the Nile. Modest yet comfortable homes, crafted from mud brick and featuring central courtyards, provide sanctuary. These communities maintain a close connection to the land, relying on the annual Nile floods for their livelihoods. In urban centers like Akhetaten, our capital during the reign of Akhenaten and myself, Nefertiti, innovative urban planning takes precedence. Streets are meticulously laid out in a grid pattern, and houses often bear a uniform design. Urban dwellers revel in the benefits of centralized services, all with an easy reach of bustling markets and sacred temples. Our deeply religious society finds many residing near temples, participating in daily rituals. Temples themselves are often accompanied by housing for priests and temple workers, individuals wholly devoted to serving the gods. Some Egyptians even make their homes directly upon the Nile itself, in houseboats. These floating abodes offer access to the river's abundant resources, from transportation and fishing to trade. With the ability to relocate as needed, these houseboat residents follow the river's seasonal shifts. These diverse living styles, rooted in our principles of order, harmony, and devotion to the Aten, create a vibrant tapestry in a society. They showcase the interwoven threads of our culture and contribute to the richness that defines our civilization, leaving an enduring legacy that continues to captivate and inspire us in the present day. In our time, the diet of the people of ancient Egypt is a true reflection of our bountiful land, the Nile as gift that sustains us. The heart of our diet lies in the bread, made from the golden grains of wheat and barley. Bread is not just a staple, it is the cornerstone of our meals, baked fresh in our homes or communal ovens. Beer, the gift of fermentation, flows through our lives. It is not just a drink but a daily companion, quenching our thirst and nourishing our bodies. The art of brewing is woven into our culture, and we cherish the different flavors and types of beer we create. Our land offers a lush array of vegetables, from the pungency of onions and garlic to the crispness of lettuce and the earthiness of radishes. These vegetables find their way into our salads and dishes, gracing our tables with their vibrant colors and flavors. Fruits bless our tables as well, with figs, dates, pomegranates, and melons. These gifts of nature, both fresh and dried, offer a sweetness that balances our savory meals. From the waters of the Nile and its tributaries, we catch fish such as the noble Nile perch and the humble catfish. Their delicate flesh provides us with protein and nourishment. Meat is a luxury reserved for those of higher standing in our society. Chickens, ducks, geese, beef, mutton, and pork grace are feasts. Roasted or stewed, these meats are prepared with care and seasoned with a blend of spices that enhance their flavors. Honey, a treasure from our bees, sweetens our lives and our dishes. We collect honey and beeswax for various purposes, adding richness to our culinary creations. Dairy, though less common, finds its place in our cuisine. Milk and cheese are enjoyed by those who can afford them, adding creaminess and richness to our meals. Dates and nuts, like the jewels of our land, offer a delightful crunch and natural sweetness, often enjoyed as snacks or in our desserts. Our diet, shaped by the bounty of the Nile and our deep connection to the land, is a testament to the prosperity and traditions of our ancient Egyptian civilization. These foods, seasoned with herbs and spices, are not just sustenance but the reflection of our culture and the heritage we hold dear. In our time, the society of ancient Egypt is built upon a well-defined structure, and their way of life is deeply rooted in tradition and order. Our society is organized into a clear hierarchy, with the pharaoh at its apex. Below the pharaoh, we have priests and nobles who serve in the temples and royal court, assisting in governance and religious duties. Artisans and craftsmen, skilled in their trades, contribute to our culture's beauty and functionality. Most of our people are farmers, working tirelessly to cultivate the fertile Nile soil. Slavery exists in our society, with some individuals serving in various roles, such as domestic servants or laborers on grand construction projects. However, we do not view slaves as lesser beings, and their rights and treatment vary depending on their masters. Education, 
Education is highly valued in our culture, and it is a privilege accessible primarily to the elite classes. Sons of nobles, priests, and other privileged individuals attend schools known as houses of life. There, they study writing, mathematics, religion, and philosophy under the guidance of skilled tutors. The goal is to prepare them for positions of leadership and service in a society. Daughters of noble families are also educated, although their focus is often on household management and etiquette. Lifespan Life expectancy varies in a society, with factors such as social class and access to health care playing a role. On average, people can expect to live into their 30s or 40s, but this varies widely. Infant mortality is high, but those who survive early childhood tend to have a better chance of living longer lives. Our people recognize the importance of health care and hygiene, and we have physicians and medical practitioners who provide care and treatments for various ailments. Our society is one of endearing traditions and respect for authority, guided by a deep belief in the divine order. We continue to strive for prosperity, unity, and the preservation of a rich heritage. In our time, the belief in the afterlife is deeply ingrained in the hearts of Egypt's people. We carry a profound conviction that life's journey doesn't halt with death. Instead, it evolves into a new existence, guided by divine principles. We believe that after death, our souls embark on a sacred voyage, a journey fraught with tests and tribulations. In this ethereal realm, the purity of our souls is measured against the feather of myth, the goddess embodying truth and justice. It's a moment of judgment, an assessment of one's earthly deeds. If the soul's purity aligns with the weight of the feather, it's deemed pure and worthy of eternal life. Such a soul is then welcomed into the loving embrace of Osiris, the god of the afterlife, and joins the blessed in the field of reeds, a paradise of abundance and serenity. To secure a favorable judgment beyond, we meticulously ready ourselves during our earthly existence. Virtuous living, adherence to moral principles, and the fulfillment of societal and religious obligations become our compass. We also partake in rituals like mummification, a process preserving our bodies for a safe passage to the afterlife. Rituals and ceremonies, from the construction of our tombs to the recitation of sacred prayers and spells, are crucial in ensuring our place in the eternal realm. We fill our tombs with sustenance, possessions, and artifacts, believing they'll accompany us and provide for us in the afterlife. Our faith in the afterlife nurtures a profound bond with our ancestors. We continue to honor and remember them through offerings, ceremonies, and tributes, ensuring they remain a vibrant part of our lives even beyond the veil of death. This profound belief in the afterlife molds our actions, guiding us to lead virtuous and meaningful lives. We don't view death as a terminus but as a transition, a continuation of our journey under the eternal gaze of the divine. Here, in the fields of everlasting bliss, await the rewards of a life well lived. In our era, the beliefs that shape our understanding of the afterlife are intricately woven into the very fabric of our society. These beliefs, some timeless and others unique to our culture, form the tapestry of our worldview. At the core of our beliefs is the profound concept of the eternal soul. We carry a deep conviction that the soul is immortal, transcending the boundaries of time and space, this belief infuses our lives with a sense of comfort and purpose, knowing that our existence extends far beyond the realm of the living. Another endearing belief centers around Mut, the goddess of truth and justice. This timeless concept underscores the essential balance of the universe. We hold that our actions in life must harmonize with Mut's principles of order, truth, and harmony. It serves as a constant reminder to lead virtuous lives and uphold moral values. Our beliefs are profoundly entwined with the divine, with our connection to the gods and goddesses being tangible and intimate. The divine is not remote in our worldview, rather, it is intricately involved in our daily lives. Our rituals, ceremonies, and offerings are a means of maintaining this sacred connection, seeking blessings and guidance from the divine realm. In our understanding of the afterlife, we embrace the idea of the transcendence of the physical world. We meticulously prepare for the journey beyond, recognizing that our earthly possessions hold little sway in the eternal realm. This belief underscores the ephemeral nature of material wealth and the enduring value of spiritual riches, anchoring our culture. A belief that bridges the past and present is our connection with our ancestors. 
We hold those who came before us in deep reverence, believing that their spirits watch over us and offer guidance. This reverence for our ancestors serves to strengthen familial bonds and solidify our sense of identity. As the river of time flows onward, some of these beliefs may evolve or yield to new ideas, while others will endure, passed down through generations. Our beliefs in the eternal soul, the balance of myth, our connection with the divine, the transcendence of the physical, and the honoring of our ancestors continue to shape our understanding of existence and the afterlife. They offer us insight and solace in a world where mysteries abound, reminding us of the enduring power of faith and tradition. In our era, our beliefs regarding the shape of the planets, our meticulous measurement of time, and our grasp of the current era all reveal our deep connection to the cosmos and our unwavering commitment to preserving our cultural heritage. Firstly, we, the people of ancient Egypt, firmly hold that the planets, much like our beloved Earth, take on a spherical form. This belief is firmly rooted in our astute observations of the night sky and the intricate dance of celestial bodies. We perceive the heavens as a vast, harmonious realm, where planets and stars move in divine synchrony. When it comes to the measurement of time, we treat it as a precious and sacred aspect of our lives. Our days are thoughtfully divided into 24 hours, guided by the graceful rhythms of the sun and moon. Our calendar harmonizes with the cycles of the lunar and solar spheres, comprising 12 months, each with 30 days. This meticulous system enables us to track the agricultural seasons, observe religious festivals, and commemorate significant events. As for the present era, we find ourselves in the midst of the New Kingdom period, a glorious chapter in the annals of Egypt's history. This era is distinguished by monumental achievements, including the construction of grand temples, majestic tombs, and a flourishing cultural scene. The New Kingdom is marked by the reign of powerful leaders and influential dynasties, and we take immense pride in our current age. We strive to uphold our cherished traditions while embracing progress and innovation. Certain beliefs, enduring through the ages, continue to shape our perspective. Our understanding of the planet's spherical nature informs our ongoing studies in astronomy. The precise measurement of time, orchestrated by celestial bodies, remains fundamental to our daily routines and societal organization. The concept of eras, demarcated by significant historical epochs, provides us with invaluable insights into our place within the grand tapestry of history. In the intricate weave of our ancient Egyptian civilization, the cosmos, time, and history converge, crafting a rich tapestry of beliefs and comprehension that molds their culture and guides their actions. In our day and age, the cities of ancient Egypt, like our beloved Akhetaten, are equipped with advanced systems for maintaining sanitation. We've ingeniously designed drainage channels and underground sewage systems that efficiently manage wastewater. These marvels of engineering channel waste away from our thriving communities and into the mighty Nile River. The Nile has annual floods, a natural blessing, serve as a cleansing agent, renewing our lands and ensuring the well-being of our people. When the sun sets, our nights are not shrouded in darkness. We've mastered the art of illumination with oil lamps and torches. Crafted from clay, our oil lamps house wicks that absorb precious oil, providing a steady and reliable flame. For broader lighting, we employ torches made from bundled reeds or wooden sticks soaked in oil, turning our streets and homes into beacons of light. Even the gentle glow of the moon and stars graces our nights, guiding our way and filling our hearts with awe. In matters of governance, our society is ruled by a centralized monarchy, where a revered pharaoh stands as the ultimate authority. With a council of wise advisors, the pharaoh manages the affairs of our great state, overseeing taxation, public works, and international diplomacy. Our dedicated officials, ever vigilant, ensure that the gears of governance turn smoothly. For maintaining order and resolving disputes, we have our own form of law enforcement. Local constables and overseers diligently work to preserve harmony within their respective regions. They mediate conflicts and ensure that the laws of our pharaoh are upheld. When it comes to our legal system, it's designed to uphold the principles of justice. We impose penalties such as fines, corporal punishment, or forced labor for various offenses. For the gravest crimes, exile or even the ultimate punishment, death, may be meted out the method of execution tailored to the nature of the transgression.
Our society treasures the ideals of balance and harmony, deeply rooted in the concept of myth, the cosmic order. Therefore, our approach to justice aims not only to confine but to restore balance in our world, ensuring that justice prevails while upholding the sacred principles that shape our way of life. In our time, the people of ancient Egypt have established a system of currency, which we call Deban. These small rings, crafted from copper or silver, each possess a designated weight that corresponds to its value. This currency system simplifies our trade and transactions, enhancing the efficiency of exchanging goods and services. However, alongside our currency, we continue to embrace a barter system, engaging in direct exchanges of goods. This practice fosters a sense of community and mutual support among us. As with any society, we do confront challenges related to crime. To maintain order, we rely on local constables and overseers, guided by our unwavering belief in MUT. Serious crimes are thoroughly investigated and resolved through a system of justice that seeks to restore balance. Justice holds a paramount place in our society, and those who transgress are held accountable through fines, corporal punishment, or forced labor, depending on the nature of their offenses. Our society finds deep unity both in belief and physical connection. We share a profound spiritual bond through our devotion to the gods and goddesses, with a particular focus on the eight and during this year. Our religious practices, rituals, and festivals serve as powerful binding forces, fostering a profound sense of community and shared purpose among us. In terms of physical connection, the magnificent Nile River stands as the lifeblood of our civilization. Its annual floods bring rejuvenation to our lands, and the river itself serves as a vital trade route, uniting our communities and enabling the exchange of goods and ideas. The Nile flows as a unifying thread throughout our land, its significance deeply woven into the fabric of our culture. Our people stand united not only by our belief in the divine order but also by the tangible bonds of the Nile, trade, and shared customs. These elements fortify our collective identity and unity, rendering our society a vibrant tapestry rich with culture and tradition. In our present time, ancient Egypt stands as a civilization with a keen awareness of the world beyond our borders. Our land's strategic location at the crossroads of Africa and the Near East positions us as a central hub for trade, diplomacy, and the vibrant exchange of cultures. In the realm of friendship and alliances, we nurture close relations with certain neighboring societies. Notably, our bond with the Kingdom of Kush to the south is of great significance. Here, we engage in the exchange of goods and cultural influences, sometimes cementing these ties through diplomatic marriages. The Kingdom of Mitanni, situated to the north, represents another valuable ally, fostering diplomatic exchanges and trade. However, not all neighboring societies share friendly sentiments. Conflicts and rivalries, particularly in the Near East, can arise, often revolving around issues of territory, resources, or political dominance. To safeguard our interests and maintain our sovereignty, we deploy diplomacy and, when necessary, military force. Our society thrives on the vibrant tapestry of cultural exchange with neighboring regions. We readily embrace and adapt elements of art, technology, and language from our interactions with other societies, thus enriching our own culture. This openness to influence allows us to evolve and flourish as a civilization. Trade routes crisscross our land, creating connections with the world beyond our borders. The Nile River, in particular, plays a pivotal role as a vital trade artery, facilitating the movement of goods such as gold, ivory, spices, and exotic animals. Our trade reaches lands as distant as Mesopotamia, the Levant, and the Mediterranean. This awareness of neighboring societies, whether in friendship or rivalry, contributes to the tapestry of influences that enrich our culture and the prosperity of our nation. The interconnectedness we embrace allows us to thrive and leave a legacy that continues to captivate and inspire, even in the modern day. In our present time, the people of ancient Egypt travel in a diverse array of games and leisure activities that infuse joy and camaraderie into our daily existence. Senet, a board game that demands strategy and skill, enjoys immense popularity, offering hours of entertainment to both the young and the old alike. Another beloved pastime is Mehan, a game represented by a coiled serpent, 
symbolizing the eternal cycle of life and serving as a poignant reminder of a profound connection to the natural world. In our vibrant time of ancient Egypt, we find joy and connection through games that resonate with the rhythms of our culture. Two games, in particular, hold a special place in our hearts, Senet and Mehen. First, there's Senet. Imagine a rectangular board, divided into 30 squares, laid out in three rows of ten. Friends and family gather, each with their game pieces, ready for a strategic journey. The goal? To move our pieces from the start to the finish, and ultimately, off the board. We roll sticks or dice to determine our moves, but it's no mere game of chance. Senet demands careful planning and tactics. Yet Senet is more than just a game. It carries deep spiritual significance. Some squares bear symbols representing life's challenges, mirroring our journey through the afterlife. In the solemn chambers of tombs, Senet sets find their place, serving as offerings to the departed and as guides for their souls in the afterworld. Then, there's Mehan, a game as unique as our culture itself. Its board takes the form of a coiled serpent, a symbol of eternal life. Two players engage in a dance of strategy, rolling dice to advance their pieces along the serpent's coils. The serpent's form embodies the cycles of life, an ever-evolving journey. Mehan isn't just a game, it's a reflection of a reverence for life's enduring and cyclical nature. It speaks to our belief in rebirth and transformation, echoing our understanding of existence and the afterlife. In these games, we find more than entertainment, we find reflections of our culture, spirituality, and values. Senet and Mehan are woven into the very fabric of our lives, connecting us with our past, guiding us through our present, and reminding us of the eternal rhythms that shape our world. In the tapestry of our ancient Egyptian culture, there exists a symbol that embodies the very essence of life and immortality. It is the Ankh, a cherished emblem that adorns our jewelry, temples, and hearts. The Ankh takes the form of a cross, with a loop at the top, reminiscent of a key. It is a symbol of profound significance, representing life in its most eternal form. The loop, often thought to resemble a mirror, reflects not only the physical realm but also the spiritual, as it captures the duality of existence. Imagine it, an ankh pendant hanging gracefully around one's neck, or carved into the walls of sacred temples. It is a reminder of our connection to the divine and the enduring nature of our existence. When worn, it serves as a talisman, bestowing blessings upon the bearer and protecting them from harm. The ankh is a symbol of life's preciousness, a reminder to cherish every moment. It symbolizes the belief that life transcends the boundaries of time and space, that it is a gift to be cherished, an eternal flame that continues to burn brightly, lighting our way through the ages. As we wear the ankh, we carry with us a piece of our culture's wisdom and the deep understanding that life is not merely fleeting, but an everlasting journey, guided by the light of the divine, and adorned with the symbol of the ankh, the key to eternity itself. Equally revered is the scarab beetle, a symbol of rebirth and transformation, often worn as an amulet. Our intricate system of hieroglyphs, serving as both a form of communication and an artistic expression, continues to captivate and endure. In our era, we've achieved remarkable advancements across various domains. Our architectural prowess stands prominently displayed in the grand temples and tombs we meticulously craft. Our understanding of mathematics and astronomy has permitted us to create precise calendars and align our monumental structures with celestial events. In the realm of medicine, a thriving art, skilled physicians and herbal remedies contribute to our overall well-being. Innovation pulses at the heart of our society. We've devised an efficient system of record-keeping and taxation, streamlining governance and trade. The invention of papyrus scrolls represents a significant technological leap, offering a medium to preserve knowledge and transmit it across generations. As a society, we are forward-thinking, holding both tradition and progress in high esteem. Our profound appreciation for the realms of art, science, and spirituality propels us onward, leaving behind a legacy of advancement and cultural richness that resonates through the annals of time. In our present era, the clothing of ancient Egypt embodies not only our practical necessities but also our profound sense of style and identity. Our attire is meticulously fashioned from fine linen, a fabric expertly crafted from the flax plant that flourishes along the fertile banks of the Nile. 
Linen stands as our cherished choice due to its comfort and breathability, perfectly suited to a warm climate. The realm of style and design within our clothing exhibits an endearing elegance. Men typically adorn themselves with kilts or loin clothes, while women favor dresses distinguished by intricate pleating and graceful drapery. The quality of one's clothing often serves as a symbol of social status, with the elite embracing more opulent and exquisitely tailored garments that glisten with the radiance of jewelry. Certain members of our society, such as our esteemed priests and dedicated military personnel, indeed wear uniforms of distinct styles. Priests, exemplifying their spiritual devotion, clothe themselves in white linen robes, often adorned with sacred symbols and amulets. Our military uniforms, both practical and robust, are designed to ensure both protection and freedom of movement. While our clothing production occurs on a large scale to fulfill the needs of our burgeoning population, the process is a testament to the craftsmanship of our skilled artisans. The journey from flax harvesting to thread spinning, fabric weaving, and the ultimate tailoring of garments requires meticulous precision and artistry. Many families are home to dedicated artisans who specialize in this revered craft. In essence, our clothing serves as a reflection of our pragmatic necessities and our deep appreciation for aesthetics. It stands as a testament to the elegance and sophistication of our civilization, with each garment serving as a masterpiece in itself, contributing to the enduring allure of our culture. In our present era, the people of ancient Egypt share their daily lives with a rich tapestry of wildlife, all thanks to the fertile lands that grace the banks of the mighty Nile River. The Nile, our cherished lifeblood, teems with a bountiful array of aquatic life. In its shimmering waters, we often cross paths with the noble Nile perch, the steadfast catfish, and an assortment of smaller fish. These creatures not only provide us sustenance through their flesh but also serve as a vital source of income, their capture fueling a thriving fishing industry. Our fertile fields and verdant farmlands are a sanctuary for numerous animals. Here, we toil in harmony with oxen and donkeys, harnessing their mighty strength to plow the earth for our agricultural endeavors. The skies above these cultivated lands are graced by birds such as cranes and herons, diligent in their task of maintaining the balance by feeding on insects and small creatures. As we venture into the surrounding desert regions, we encounter hardy desert animals, brilliantly adapted to the unforgiving environment. The majestic desert fox, the resourceful desert hare, and the elusive sand gazelle are among the creatures we may chance upon during our travels. Domesticated animals hold a special place in our society, with cattle, sheep, and goats serving as vital sources of meat, milk, and wool. We raise these creatures both for sustenance and to support our flourishing textile industry, their wool woven into fine textiles that grace our daily lives. Yet, a reverence for the animal kingdom extends beyond the practical. We hold certain creatures in deep esteem, considering them sacred. The sacred ibis, for example, is closely associated with the god Thoth, symbolizing wisdom and knowledge. Cats, esteemed for their grace and revered for their role in pest control, occupy a cherished place in our hearts. Animals are not merely passive observers of our existence, they are integral to our art and religion. They find prominent representation in our hieroglyphs and temple decorations, serving as powerful symbols that reflect various facets of our culture, spirituality, and beliefs. Our encounters with the natural world, encompassing both the domestic and the wild, enrich our lives and serve as well springs of inspiration for our art and culture. These connections with the land and its inhabitants foster a profound bond that endures through the ages. In the present of my time, the reign of Queen Nefertiti has witnessed remarkable changes within her beloved land of ancient Egypt. Foremost among these changes is the transformation in her religious beliefs. During this era, we have embraced the Aten, the sun god, as the central figure of our faith. This transition to monotheism has reshaped our religious practices, with the Aten depicted as a radiant disc emanating life-giving rays. My husband, Pharaoh Akhenaten, and I have championed this new faith, emphasizing the Aten's status as the supreme and sole deity. Another monumental shift is the relocation of our capital city. We have moved from the traditional capital of Thebes to the newly founded city of Akhetaten, dedicated entirely to the worship of the Aten. This move has profoundly impacted our society, influencing our art, architecture, and daily routines. 
Our artistic expression has undergone a revolution in style and representation. There is a discernible move towards a more naturalistic and intimate portrayal of royal life in our sculptures and reliefs. Our art now captures the essence of our daily existence, emphasizing family life, in contrast to the grand and formal depictions of previous eras. In this time, we have also observed a shift in gender roles. I myself have taken on a more prominent and influential role, often depicted alongside my husband in positions of equal importance. This reflects a growing recognition of my power and influence in our society. Our ear has embraced a degree of religious and cultural tolerance. While the worship of the eight and holds central importance, we respect and tolerate the religious beliefs of others, allowing for diversity within our society. These changes have brought both challenges and opportunities. While we embrace the new faith and the sense of renewal it brings, it also raises questions and uncertainties. The transformations in our art and society have sparked debates and discussions among our people, reflecting the dynamism of our culture. In my time, under my rule as Queen Nefertiti, ancient Egypt stands at a crossroads, navigating a period of profound transformation and redefinition. These changes, though significant, are a testament to our enduring spirit, adaptability, and the rich tapestry of our history. In our time as pharaoh and queen in ancient Egypt, we introduced significant changes that set a reign apart from those of previous rulers. These changes encompassed various aspects of our society, including religion, art, and governance. One of the most profound departures was our exclusive devotion to the Aten, the sun disk, as the sole deity, in contrast to previous rulers who had revered a pantheon of gods and goddesses. This religious shift defined the Amarna period, emphasizing monotheism over polytheism. In our artistic endeavors, we diverged from the traditional conventions of the time. Our art embraced a more naturalistic and relaxed portrayal of the human form, with a focus on depicting a royal family's daily life. This was a departure from the more rigid and idealized representations seen in previous reigns. We relocated the capital city from Thebes to Akhetaten, establishing it as a center for Aten worship. This move redirected the administrative and religious focus away from Thebes, the former capital. In certain depictions, I was portrayed as an equal co-regent alongside Pharaoh Akhenaten, a departure from the gender roles typical of the year. We also introduced new religious practices, such as open-air offerings to the Aten and modifications in temple rituals, aligning them with their monotheistic beliefs. These changes defined a reign and marked a distinct period in ancient Egyptian history, known as the Amarna period or the Amarna Revolution. While we did not entirely abandon the past, a reign represented a notable shift in religious, artistic, and cultural expressions that set us apart from previous rulers, shaping the legacy of our time in history. In the days of our reign in ancient Egypt, my family holds a place of great significance in our kingdom. Allow me to introduce you to the key members of my family. First and foremost, there is my beloved husband, Pharaoh Akhenaten, also known as Amenhotep IV. He stands by my side as both my husband and my co-regent during our rule. Our family is blessed with several children. While we have six daughters, we also have a son named Tutankhaten, who will later become renowned as Pharaoh Tutankhamun, a name echoing through history. Let me introduce our daughters as well. Meritaten, Mekataten, Ankus and Pyaten, who will later adopt the name Ankesnaman, Nefernfurit and Tasharit, Nefernfurer, and Setapun. As for my own family lineage, the identity of my parents remains a subject of ongoing research and discussion among historians. Some believe my father is a, a prominent figure in Pharaoh Akhenaten's court, who later ascended to the throne himself. However, the identity of my mother is less certain. I also share a close bond with my sister, Mutnajmet, who is married to Hormheb, a figure of significance in her kingdom and a future pharaoh. Her family is interconnected with the broader Egyptian aristocracy and court during the illustrious 18th dynasty. These familial ties play a pivotal role in the politics and culture over time, shaping the course of Egyptian history and leaving a lasting legacy for generations to come. In my current day, I reside in the magnificent city of Akhetaten, which has been established as our new capital. It is a place of immense significance, designed to honor the Aten, 
the sun disk, and serve as the center of our monotheistic worship. Life here in Akhetaten is unlike any other. The city is a testament to our devotion to the Aten, with grand temples and shrines dedicated to the sun god. The streets are laid out in a grid pattern, a reflection of our commitment to order and harmony in all aspects of life. Our palace is a place of splendor, adorned with intricate carvings and exquisite paintings. It serves not only as a residence but also as a center of administration and governance. Within its walls, we conduct matters of state and hold meetings with our advisors and officials. As a family, we lead a life of purpose and devotion to the Aten. Our daily routines involve participating in religious rituals, offering prayers and hymns to the Sun God. These ceremonies are essential expressions of our belief in the divine order and the Aten's role in our lives. I also take pride in our artistic pursuits. The artistic style over time has shifted from the rigid conventions of the past to a more naturalistic and relaxed portrayal of the human form. We commission artists to capture the moments of our daily life, celebrating the beauty of our family and the world around us. In this city, we have fostered a unique approach to gender roles. In certain depictions, I am portrayed as an equal co-regent alongside Pharaoh Akhenaten, a symbol of our progressive values. Overall, life in Akhetaten is a reflection of our commitment to monotheism, artistry, and progress. It is a life filled with purpose and devotion to the Aten, a life dedicated to leaving a lasting legacy in the annals of Egyptian history. In Egypt's golden sands, we thrive today, beneath the sun's embrace, we find our way. In my reign, a shift profound you'll see, monotheism's light, our faith set free. The Aten, radiant sun, our guiding star, in daily rituals, from near and far. No pantheon of gods, one diet is grace, illuminating every Egyptian face. In Akhetaten, our capital divine, a testament to order's grand design. Streets and grids, a place as ornate grace, a new era dawning, a sacred space. Artistry evolved, a naturalistic flow, capturing life's moments, a glow. Gender roles transformed, equality we'd see, my presence, a symbol of decree. The Nile, eternal lifeline, we embrace, its annual floods, a blessing we trace. Farming communities on fertile banks reside, connecting land and people, side by side. Unity in belief, communities embrace, through rituals and festivals, we face. A profound bond, a spiritual thread, in devotion to the Aten, we are led. Egypt's history, in layers rich and deep, my reign's promise, a legacy to keep. In sunlit sands, my spirit still endures, a tale of change, and faith that ever assures. In Egypt's golden sands, we thrive today, beneath the sun's embrace, we find our way. In my reign, a shift profound you'll see, monotheism's light, our faith set free. The Aten, radiant sun, our guiding star, in daily rituals, from near and far. No pantheon of gods, one diet is grace, illuminating every Egyptian face. In Akhetaten, our capital divine, a testament to order's grand design. Streets and grids, a place as ornate grace, a new era dawning, a sacred space. Artistry evolved, a naturalistic flow, capturing life's moments, a glow. Gender roles transformed, equality we'd see, my presence, a symbol of decree. The Nile, eternal lifeline, we embrace, its annual floods, a blessing we trace. Farming communities on fertile banks reside, connecting land and people, side by side. Unity in belief, communities embrace, through rituals and festivals, we face. A profound bond, a spiritual thread, in devotion to the Aten, we are led. Egypt's history, in layers rich and deep, my reign's promise, a legacy to keep. In sunlit sands, my spirit still endures, a tale of change, and faith that ever assures. Now, an ode to my family, dear and true, Pharaoh Akhenaten, my love, and you. A reign, a partnership, side by side, in devotion to the Aten, we take pride. Our daughters, the future's hopeful glow, with grace and wisdom, they'll surely grow. Together we stand, a family strong, in ancient Egypt's story, we all belong. In Egypt's heart, our legacy shall remain, a testament to love, amidst joy and pain. In unity and faith, 
we built our way, in the radiant sun's eternal ray. In Egypt's heart, our legacy remains, beneath the sun's eternal, golden chains. In unity and faith, we found our way, in my reign, we stand today. So let our voices rise, in homage we decree, to the Athens' radiant light, and unity's decree. In Egypt's sands, our story ever weaves, in my era, our hearts believe. Through time's unending flow, our spirits soar, in Egypt's grand era, forevermore. In my reign, our souls unite, in Egypt's ancient glory, our guiding light.